What's up, fellas? Melting some anode sludge today with the Godzilla burner. Let's see what we got going on here, see if we can pull it off. Burning some diesel fuel with some waste oil. Okay, so my fire clay crucibles have finally arrived after many, many months, many, many moons. We are going to be melting this e-waste anode sludge. We made a anode out of e-waste, plated the copper out, and this is the sludge that we recovered. So we're gonna weigh that up, and we're gonna throw it in a crucible on top of a little bit of flux, and we're gonna throw some flux on top of that, and we're gonna cook it without any collector metal. Okay, 81.3 grams of e-waste. Let's do this. Okay, fellas, 26 minutes later, we're at about 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so that kind of sucks. We had a lot of junk in there that didn't melt. I think I got too much waste oil in my mix. Yeah, I see a bead of metal right there. That was on the bottom. Not good. Uh, we're gonna redo this. The crucible did great though. I can't say that. I think I'm just gonna throw that stuff from the last burn we did into this crucible and get the whole thing going again. Very unsettling noises. Both items are doing that. Um, this stuff does not act like the initial anode ingots, that's for sure. We're going to have to relearn how to do this process. The standard anode smelting process is not going to cut it. That's probably all material right there. So I don't know after, let's see, what was it, 30 minutes for the most part above 2000 degrees. Okay, here we go, round two. I'm almost positive that green stuff is nickel oxide, guys, because like an idiot, I threw some sodium nitrate into the flux. So, probably a bad idea in this particular situation when you have nickel present, because nickel oxide is not easy to melt at all. All right, guys, in the second run, we don't gotta run it as long because everything's preheated, so here we go. My metal leaked out. Damn. We had a crucible failure. But there's the metal feed right there. Shit. Oh, 
as I got it off. Okay, so I wanted to give this another try, but it is unfortunately raining in the dead of winter. I don't know what's going on. It should be snowing right now. This is what I ended up with here. I don't know if that's like metal powder we're looking at, which it does subtly resemble a metal powder. So I'm gonna break this crucible it's already busted anyway and uh, we're gonna get a better look at what's going on down inside of there I believe this cracked because I have what's called a direct flame impingement foundry for the highest temp possible but it's just not good on crucibles I'm gonna build another cyclone unit eventually I'll bust the oxyhydrogen torch out on that and see if I can ball that into a little bead of metal the thing that worries me the most about this process is I think we're burning up all of our silver. I don't think this process is suitable um, for silver. It's too high of a temperature. All right, let's throw about 10,000 watts of electricity into this mix here and see what we can do with some oxyhydrogen gas, see if we can melt this uh, nickel oxide that we've got going on that's what all that green color is we're going to add some propane to this gas too to make the flame a little bit more reducing maybe it will reduce some of the oxide we'll be pushing about 250 volts 20 amps through this massive diode here i believe that's a 20,000 watt diode but i'll have to check it might even be a 50,000 watt diode we got plenty of cooling with it so we're good to go Okay, I'm just gonna kind of ramble on here for a minute as we do this. And my conclusion is, is this is a horrible process. I don't like it at all. We're not getting anywhere near the yields that we seen when we were melting down the e-waste concentrate off the shaker table. I mean, even in worst case scenario, you'd wanna see a 60% yield. Um, I am just doing everything in the world I can to get a gram out of a hundred grams of this stuff. So some of the literature that I have read pertaining to the composition of anode mud states that a lot of it is oxygen and sulfur compounds. The oxygen comes from the actual oxygen compounds or the actual oxygen content of the anode itself during the smelting process. It is typical to monitor the oxygen uh, content and to reduce it by passing natural gas through the molten metal. And they bring it down to below 200 parts per million before it's considered acceptable. Okay, so this stuff had a very high melting point. You can see I started, I melted through it, started going to the fire play there. But there it is. Just for contrast, there's some of it that hadn't been melted yet. Got kind of a red sheen going to it now. This is the stuff in the tray. Now those couple of little round spheres, those very tiny ones, I did not notice that big one glowing, but maybe it was. But those little tiny spheres right there were glowing white hot, about five times brighter than anything else around. That's how you can tell the metal content sometimes. So. I'm not seeing a lot of metal in that, except for those little tiny beads right there. Those little blobs there are not metal. I don't know what that is. That's some type of uh, slag material. Now, someone who's been doing this forever can tell us what's going on based on the colors they're seeing. So, 
I can't give this crucible a bad name just yet. I didn't preheat it or anything like that. I just threw it right in the fire. But nonetheless, uh, we lost our, a huge part of our gold bead in the crucible there. And when I tried to recover it, most of it was burning like iron. So now I have to produce more anode sludge. We're not done yet. That's a pretty good sized lump of metal it looks like there. If that was pure gold, it'd be great, but it's not. It seems like uh, there was some iron or something in there that was uh, pyophoric. The only thing I really got just to show for all that was this bead right here. 0.9 to 0.7 grams is what I was measuring it at. The temperatures involved were too high for silver. We're probably burning up all of our silver. And I don't think using a nitrate flux is a good idea for that. Okay, Basil. So the information in this test is going to be used to kind of prescribe a flux recipe that I think will be suitable for an anode sludge that has not been exposed to an acid leach. As you said, we're trying to avoid that as much as possible. So we're going to follow suit. Uh, we're definitely learning what not to do here. I was expecting a lot more metal out of that anode sludge and I'm just not getting, no matter what I do, we're getting pathetic yields. I'm um, not seeing any economical feasibility here. It's, it is possible, but it's kind of like flying a rocket across the country versus taking an airplane. Um, so I've got a lot more testing to do. I had to find out what happens when you don't use a collector metal. So the next step is we're gonna use a collector metal, but that is a hazardous process in itself. So uh, we've got some, uh, some soul searching to do here on this.